it's me again. It's me again. So, what I'm going to discuss in this video is basically going to be me talking about what the medium had to say and a little bit of 2011 just to kind of, you know, express the gist. The second worst year of my life. As a YouTube year, it was really, really fucking awesome because, like, my viewers just kind of went, and that's all you guys so thank you so much for the support in 2011 it's like I remember I was stuck on like 50 subscribers for quite some time so for all the people out there starting a YouTube channel that are all like oh god no subscribers nobody's watching my videos ah. I think I just heard my belly go it just doesn't just happen it gradually happens and if it just just happens randomly and it's like boom you go from 10 to like 15,000 then yeah that's fucking awesome but most of the time it really does not work that way 2011 is a year for me for YouTube was really good but for everything else it was really 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 not a good year for me um, 2011 was just ugh. the relationship that I actually got myself back into was a very unhealthy relationship and I was kind of pushed back into the relationship and I kind of built myself up again and made myself strong but then unfortunately at a very weak stage I got back into that relationship and the relationship was really unhealthy for me. If any of you understand the term gaslighting or to be gaslighted that's what happened to me and without going into too much detail yeah it was insane because not only am I bipolar but the majority of the time I'm a very very strong person. If you know about gaslighting you'll know that it tends to be the more stronger characters that actually become victim to being gaslighted. And I don't know if this is straight. It's like because I was such a strong character it's kind of like I was a perfect target but at the same time I was very vulnerable at the time because lots of things had happened in my life which basically made me the perfect like victim to be gaslighted. Being gaslighted has certainly changed me in a million trillion ways like I don't know if I've mentioned, but basically in 2012, I'm only ever going to get into a relationship if the guy is really, really worth it. It's kind of, I've been put off massively because of how I got treated. Um, there was a million trillion things that happened that you just have no idea that somebody's actually capable of doing. And on top of that, the last straw for me was when I got cheated on. I have basically found out that he was flirting with other girls behind my back quite vividly, basically kind of really disgustingly. I found out that he was saying to a girl that he wanted to bend her over a table and her. And then I also found out there's another six girls. Um, so yeah, it wasn't just one occasion and he said he was drunk. All my family tried to warn me against this person but because I'm such a warm-hearted person and because I'm like, I'll give everybody a chance, just not in the relationship sense but as as a person. Like, as a person, I don't like to judge people and I like to give everybody a chance and I like to try and love people for their flaws as well as their perfection. For me, I don't believe that I am in the correct position to judge people on their past or to judge them on their, like, minor, you know, problems in life. And this person that I was with, he had a lot of anger issues and he had a lot of issues, but I was willing to work with that and to help him get better. But then it all turned out he was just taking his anger out on me and creating a problem, which in the result ended up me being gaslighted and to the point where I couldn't hang out with my male friends like whenever Dave would call me I would get moaned at if I picked up the phone um, he would constantly bring up my past which was really hurtful for me in 2011 I lost someone very dear to me who I wanted to remain friends with and he stopped that the um, new guy or whatever he stopped that he just changed me as a whole he didn't affect me in the personality traits or something so what you've seen is what you've got but behind the scenes I did end up very very upset um, so in 2011 it's like because I went through a massive heartbreak because I I went through a breakup with someone I'd been with for three years and then afterwards I got with this guy who seemed like a breath of fresh air he was such a nice guy and I just had no idea what he was going to do to me and the person that I thought he was he isn't and yeah I'm starting to believe he might actually be a psychopath <laughs> went through this whole situation where I got gaslighted by somebody that I cared about and cheated on and in Easter time it's like I went to Cyprus and I had such an amazing time as, as you'll probably have seen in the vlog because I had such a great time but when I got there to see my great grandma she actually was suffering from Alzheimer's and it was 
horrible, basically. Like, I've never been so upset that somebody couldn't, like, you know, understand who I was. Someone just didn't know who I was. And it was so hurtful. I went in there with a brave face, but I just, I couldn't keep it together. And I just remember crying afterwards and Dave feeling really bad that he couldn't comfort me. Um, but yeah, so losing my great Yaya, which was two weeks after I'd got back home, was very upsetting for me. And at this point, I was like single. I'd already ended the relationship that I was in. Um, and then because of how vulnerable I was and how upset I was and how alone I felt, I tried to become friends with somebody who I really wanted in my life, who basically rejected me, didn't want anything to do with me. And I wrote a 7,500 word essay to that person and basically got ignored. So it was really upsetting. And because of that and because of my great grandma dying and then because of my bipolar having a fit, I ended up being sucked back into the unhealthy relationship, convincing myself that I deserved it, that I deserved every single thing I got. That's one of the dangerous things about bipolar disorder. What a lot of people won't realise is when you're at your most vulnerable stage, when you're feeling so low and so alone you sometimes it's like you can harm yourself with like god knows you'll want to kill yourself or you'll want to hurt yourself or you just don't want to exist anymore but sometimes you can hurt yourself on a mental level and sometimes you can hurt yourself on a physical level and i i did take some pills and i did try to overdose in 2011 and i was unsuccessful um, so I'm so sorry for all of you that thought that like I was this really strong person because technically speaking I am this really strong person but it's like I, w I got to a state where I was so low and I felt so alone and it was horrible it was really horrible it's like everything around me was falling apart everything was crashing down on me It was horrible and then I got sucked back into this unhealthy relationship which basically started to ruin me again and then I found out he was flirting with girls behind my back and picking me apart as a person and trying to change who I was and if you're in love with someone you love them for the person they are, you don't try and change them. It's gone really sunny outside. They'll go dark again in a minute. It's gone really, really strangely bright out there. Okay, I think I've kind of fixed it. Okay, so all the things that happened in 2011 that kind of ruined me, in a sense. Um, I didn't just try and overdose pills because of, because of a few things. It was like a lot of things together, some things too personal to even mention. Um, but you had the whole being treated like shit and being gaslighted by somebody that was supposed to care about you, that you trusted after you had no trust left. Um, my great-grandma dying, or my great-yaya. And I considered somebody to be my friend, and then they turned their back on me and made out I was this person that I wasn't and that was the drummer of my band who I was incredibly fond of so that was really hurtful for me when he did what he did I felt so betrayed so because of that it's like I just I went in an even more destructive path and then I did what I did um, which I'm not very proud of um, then on top of that it's like pff, I started getting sucked into this really bad place and I've just never felt so alone like I had nobody there and it's horrible because when Dave and Mark like probably watch this video or when they like you know talk to me or something or whatever for them to m think that I'm like feeling alone and stuff it's like they'll feel pretty much helpless because all they ever do is try and make me feel better about things it's like I am a pretty happy person and most of the time 80% 90% of the time I am the happiest girl on the planet like seriously I'll be like so hyper and I'll be so happy and then when the, all these bad things happen to me at once, my world just comes crashing down. So, yeah, it's like, I really want to just put 2011 in the past and focus on 2012. Now, I made this, I made all my resolutions and stuff, which we would have seen in the video before this one, because that's the order I'm going to put these up. And the next day I went to a medium, so a few of these things have changed because of the medium, and it was my first experience going to a medium. I wrote everything down on my phone. So when I went into the whole medium, the medium's place or whatever, he didn't sit across from me like you would speak to someone like I'm speaking to you now. He sat the side of me. I had to have my legs like apart. I had to have both feet on the ground. I had to have both hands in the chair. And he said to me that, 
like if I lie a light would come out of my chest or something so you'd be able to know if I was lying. So yes. So then obviously like I felt a bit weird and the first thing he actually said to me he said I'm getting a good vibe from you but and I was like and then I saw this light in his eyes when I was looking at him and he basically turned into my dad and I know that sounds really crazy but like my dad absolutely hated the person that I was going out with that gaslighted me that I mentioned the person that was treating me like shit um he hated his guts and but because I was so fond of him and because I trusted him um I'd always ignore my dad what my dad was saying and all the people around me that were saying he was bad and he was this and he was probably cheating on me I would always say no he's not no he's not because I was being gaslighted so I honestly didn't realize what was going on and what, how I was being treated and controlled and manipulated and the psychic medium dude because that's what he was he said these exact words to me because I've written them down he said you're in an on and off relationship at the moment aren't you and I was kind of saying to myself well I've not been for a few months I said I guess and then he was like end it if you've not already ended it and I said I have ended it and he said great don't go back and then he got incredibly angry in his eyes and I saw it he got so fucking pissed off and he started shouting at me saying stay away from that guy he's bloody mental he's sick he's dangerous he's only using you and you thought he was cheating on you did yeah and I was instantly like Ooh. and then he was like well he did numerous amounts of times leave that dickhead in the past and that's how angry he got and this is a 66 year old man and he got angry at me so that was kind of like whoa i wanted to like you want to find out who you cheated on me with it's like common sense it's like if you've been cheated on you want to be like who or where or what and yada 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 so then i was kind of just like who what where are they? and then he was just like shut up leaving in the past we're moving on blah blah he's quite aggressive about it so i just chose to you know like listen to him and he just said just listen to me and don't go back whatever you do do not go back and please please if you're not gonna listen to me leave because it's very important you do not go back to that guy and i was like okay thinking about getting a tattoo this year aren't you and i was like yeah. the last time you went to america he was gonna get a tattoo wasn't you and i was like yeah and he said don't and i was kind of like Oh. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, don't. And I was kind of like, why? And he said, it doesn't matter why, but it's not right. No, it's not going to improve your career. Don't do it. It'll hold you back. And I was kind of thinking to myself, mm, it's dangerous, apparently. So he's saying, don't get inked this year. If you're going to get inked, well, he didn't say inked, he said tattooed. If you're going to get tattooed, do it next year or the year after, but do not do it this year. So I was kind of like, oh, okay. And then it's like my friend was saying to me, like, you have brightly coloured hair, so he's probably just assuming that's the next path you're going down. So, yeah. It was really strange how he knew that I went to America and I was going to get my um, Kaplunk flower, which is the um, Green Day Kaplunk logo flower thing on my ankle in Texas. I just didn't end up doing it. I can't really remember why. I think it was because I was deciding on, like, whether I would, you know get the tattoo or use the money you know and have more fun in Austin while I was there and then he said to me you're thinking about going to New York or California this year aren't you and I was like I hadn't put the video online before this one and I hadn't you know posted really anywhere not even Tumblr that I was planning on going to New York or California this year a few years ago I might have posted something about California and wanted to go to New York but I hadn't mentioned that I wanted to do it specifically this year god what's gonna happen to you you're thinking about going to California, New York this year before going somewhere else and obviously I was because I was planning to go to New York, California or Florida before I go to Texas for my 21st and he said you will go this year, that will happen so I was like yay, I was really happy that he said that so it was kind of nice that he'd said that but at the same time my heart was still going dun 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 about the thing he'd said about the guy cheating on me basically so it was kind of like ugh He said to me when I'm older if I get offered a partnership with somebody in America like in my late 20s to say yes as much as I probably won't want to do it at the time say yes because it'll help me come into money or something weird so that was weird there was something he said which was kind of like uh, he just turned to me and got really quiet and said like you just want to be loved don't you yeah because everybody wants to be loved don't they so it was like hmm and he was like he's not here yet and I was like and he's like your soulmate isn't any of your exes. It isn't anyone around you at this minute. Blah, blah, blah. And I was kind of like, hmm. And he was like, don't worry about that. 
focus on your career now. He told me if I spot the same signs where someone's gonna control me or take advantage of my niceness, I should stay away from them. So it's kind of like, ah. Uh. And he said, you're gonna meet somebody that does drugs and you're gonna come into money and because you've come into money, you're gonna be tempted to do the drugs. Say no or else it will kill you basically. So that was nice. And then he said to me that I'll get married in my late twenties and I'll have kids in my early thirties. Like he could have just, you know, guessed this kind of thing because that tends to be the average age that people get married in England, late twenties and they have kids in their early thirties if they have a career first. If they don't have a career first, it tends to be get married at 24 and then kind of like have kids at 26 kind of thing. But yeah. So that was quite interesting. Yeah, I probably guessed that. He said to me, you've been offered to do a lingerie shoot, haven't you? Um, and then before I could finish, he said, well, you've been offered the lingerie shoot, you're a bit, you're steering away from it because you don't really wanna do it, but I suggest you do it, it will improve your career. And the lingerie shoot that I've been offered is more tasteful, it's not tacky, it's not sl like slaggy or slutty or anything. It's quite like a pretty idea of the shoot. And I was kind of like, mm, but it's lingerie, and then I've decided to go for it, and I'm going to do it. You're going to be published in a magazine this year, apparently, so we'll see if that comes true. But I've already been in two magazines. Um, one was in Canada, and then um, in London, um, I did a photo shoot for Sugar magazine um, years and years ago. And I had brown hair and blonde underneath, and really messy rainbow makeup, but it's something about standing out and being different and blah. So I was in a magazine then, so I don't know if he was referencing to the past, but he just kind of said that this year I would be in another magazine, so I was kind of like, uh, oh, so we'll see, we'll see if that happens. He told me that he can see me in a black Audi, which is a car, and that would be very significant to me, but I can't drive. The only car I've driven is Dave's, and yeah, I was driving fine. I didn't stall once, but then when he told me, Jess, don't go anywhere near the imaginary cars, make sure you go in a full circle and don't hit any of the imaginary cars. I hit all the imaginary cars, so yeah, I don't think I'll be driving at any point soon. Another thing he asked me is, um, do I know how to ski? And I was like, no, and he said, learn. And I was kind of like, oh, because surely if I was going to learn to do anything on snow, it would be snowboarding because I can skateboard and I like to skateboard and I used to skateboard all the time, but instead he said ski. So maybe skiing opens up an opportunity for me somewhere, but he said something about me learning how to ski and that when the opportunity arises, do it. So I was kind of like, okay. He started referencing to my job at Lush, um, which was really creepy how he mentioned like exactly he just basically, like, long story short, he told me exactly what the problems were there without me even opening my mouth and things that I've not even told the internet. So it's kind of like, uh. Um, so he was spot on about all the things that he said about my part-time job that I had. And then he basically mentioned to me that while I'm studying, I shouldn't have a part-time job because I haven't actually got the capacity to, to like, have a part-time job, like a proper one, and study at the same time and do other things. And he said a part-time job will just do more bad than good for me. And he said, you think about opening a shop, open that, concentrate on your modelling and your acting. He said, he said acting randomly, blah, 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 blah. Oh, so it's kind of like acting. And he said, your natural talent is acting. It's not this, it's not that, it's not this, it's acting. And I was kind of like, yeah, I used to do acting lessons as a child. I used to go to the same place, you know, where they teach all the people in Coronation Street to like, woo, act and all that shit. I used to go there. And then like when I moved to America to live in Austin, I stopped those lessons. And because I stopped those lessons, I just never ever went back and I never ever did it again. I was in a commercial, but it wasn't a very, very famous commercial. I don't know if it was ever aired on TV. I just know that I filmed a commercial. I can't remember seeing it. So I don't know if like, I didn't make it or whatever, but I did a few things like that. And I used to be in like plays and I had those acting lessons. When he was talking about this, I just turned around and I said, I don't really act anymore. And he said, restart your lessons because you're not going to make it in music and that was really like upsetting to me because obviously music is like my life and he turned around and said carry on with your art carry on with your modeling start acting it's through those that your music will become successful he said you won't get successful in music and then branch out you need to branch out and then become successful in music and i was like oh and then that brings me on to the next thing he talked about with music like this is another thing that kind of like he could have found out on the internet but at the same time like he wouldn't have known certain details if it wasn't like, you know, he wasn't doing his job properly. He said to me, um, I've got a great rock voice, but I'm not using my voice to the best of my ability. I have an incredibly powerful voice and I should be using it to sing more ballads. And my dad was saying this to me a few weeks ago that like, he knows that I've got a really good like rock punk voice because of the huskiness of my voice and stuff. But he said that I should try and sing some songs that are more like, you know, ballady or like high pitched and stuff, whatever, because like, 
I've got a really powerful voice. Like, out of all the girls in the choir that I used to be in, I was always the really fucking loud one. There's always that really loud, annoying one in the choir, you know, that gets all these massive loud parts. Well, that was me. And then he also told me to focus on modelling the most out of all of them. But he said that I really need to start up the acting again. Like, we were severely, kept going back to talking about acting, so it's kind of like, hmm. But I've been thinking about having the acting lessons again, but I'm kind of like, meh, because I'm really shit at learning lines. Like, terrible. I am so terrible at learning lines. Give me some lyrics, I'll know them straight away. I'll be able to mesmerise. Mesmerise is not the right word. I'll be able to memorise it, like... But if you give me, like, a script, I panic. I really do. And he said to me, am I thinking about having my teeth whitened? And I was like, no, but I did start using a whitening toothpaste. And he was like... Your teeth don't need to get any white. If anybody comes to you and they, they're talking about whitening the teeth, tell them not to and don't ever get your teeth whitened. So I just kind of thought that was a bit weird. I was like, hmm, strange. And he said to me, never get my boobs done. I'd never get my boobs done anyway. There's a good handful there. There's a good handful there. Then he said if someone else is going to come to me and they're like, ooh, I'm thinking about getting my boobs done, warn them against it as well. But he could have got that off the news because there's been this thing about implants like popping and exploding recently. So he could have easily got it from that. So that's kind of like, hmm. He turned around to me and he said that one of your best friends is in love with you. I said, yeah. And he said, don't go there. And I was like, I, I wouldn't go there. And he was like, maybe in a few years' time you'll be tempted to go there. Don't do it. And I was like, well... I'd never do it anyway because I wouldn't want to ruin the friendship and I'm just not attracted to him at all. He told me that I'm going to be very big on the internet this year and I was just kind of like, nah. Maybe I'll become an international porn star, getting my Wongo Wongas out, doing my La La thing all over some guy's face. No. He said to me that I'm going to be just fine and I'm going to do incredibly well. He said that if I focus on my career and don't let somebody like make me settle down, he said don't settle down whatever you do, not now, not yet. He said, if you want to have a relationship, have a relationship, but don't settle down and stop doing what you want to do with your career. He said, I need more self-confidence, I need more belief in myself, and I need to um, have more like confidence in the things that I do because I always end up like feeling like I'm shit at everything. And when he said that, it was kind of like, yeah, that's true. That's very true. Because a lot of people on here will be like, oh my god, you have the most confidence in the world. And I'll be like, I'm a really, really fucking confident person. I'm confident in who I am. I'm confident in everything I'm saying and I'm always completely honest. But when it comes to like my artwork or my music, I'll pick it apart like a motherfucker until I believe it's perfect. And it's like, with my music, I don't think I'm the best singer in the world. And I don't think I'm very talented as a musician. But writing lyrics is my way of expressing myself and singing and music and everything just makes my life as a whole and it's like when people say music's my life you don't know the meaning of music being in your life being your life until it saves your life on numerous occasions if music didn't exist I would have died years ago and honestly it's true but he basically said that like oh, it's taking me so long to explain all this <laughs> He was basically talking about how, like, I will do fine and stuff. And then he said, if I just stick to everything he's saying, I'll be incredibly successful. And then he said, I'm going to come into money. And I was kind of like, oh, I wish. I'm going to come into a lot of money and it's going to be at a random point. It's going to, like, randomly appear in my lap, basically. He said, it's just going to appear. And if you um, put half of it away and then keep the rest and play with it, you'll be absolutely fine. Keep working on your career. But if you come into the money and you spend it all and you start to get big-headed about it, you will become really poor really quickly, which is kind of common sense, but I really don't think I'm gonna come into money like at all. So it's kind of like, yeah, whatever. And then I was thinking to myself, if I ask him for the lottery numbers, will he give me them? But well, obviously he wouldn't have, so I didn't ask. I had to have my phone in it, so I couldn't record it. I had to put my phone in a shoe in the corridor. So yeah, sorry about that guys. He can see me in Goa in India. I've never really wanted to go to India. It's like, I'd rather go to other places like, if it comes to it and I do travel the world, then whatever, let's go to India. But there's a lot of places that I would rather spend my money on going other than India. So when he said that he could see me in Goa in India, I was kind of like, meh. But then I remembered that my auntie actually has moved to Goa in India. Not the one that lives in America, but the other one on the Greek side. Even though she's on the Greek side, but like the Greek, Greek auntie. Okay, you don't know what I'm talking about, but she lives in Goa now. So I think he, it was weird how he mentioned that. He also said that he could see me in Italy. And I was kind of like, oh, Italy. Cool. I've always wanted to go to Italy, so that was cool. And then he said, you're going to be invited to Ireland or Scotland um, this year. You're going to be a bit meh about going, but you should go. He said, it's more than likely going to be a very last minute thing, but you should just do it because it'll be really good for you. The weird thing is, after the whole meeting, I talked to my friend on the phone and he was like, oh yeah, I was just looking at stuff in Scotland. So it's kind of like... And then he said that London and New York are going to be incredibly important for me career-wise. And Manchester will always be my home. But 
I'll be really, really like focused on London and New York. And I was kind of like, mention Austin, Texas. Mention Austin, Texas. Be with my hand then. I was like, Ugh. Then he said he could see me in Canada and he could see me in Australia. And then he said he could see me in Egypt. Now, again, with Egypt, I've never really been interested in going to Egypt, but at the same time, I would love to see the pyramids. But after watching Carl Pilkington tear apart Egypt and just be like, there's rubbish everywhere. Mate, this is nothing like the brochures. I don't know why he's turned into a scally, but yeah, like, that kind of put me off going to Egypt. So when he said that, it was kind of like, meh. He said all of those things, and then he said, I'm going to get around, I'm going to be a traveller. Um, then he said that someone's birthday is coming up in May, and I'll be invited to their birthday. And at first I'll kind of be like, meh, and then, I'll, and then if I go, it'll be really good for me, and apparently, like, something good will come out of it. But if I say no, then... Then he asked me if I knew a Thomas, and I was kind of like, no, I know a Tom. After the whole session, after I was speaking to my dad, my dad was like, Hanker's brother's called Thomas. So, like, it was weird. This list of people that he gave me apparently were important, or, like, they would do something, or, like, some something's going to happen with these names this year or something. So, there was Thomas, Stephen, James, Tony, Lily, John, and Anthony. But, obviously, he didn't read it out like a list like that. He basically, um, he talked about Stephen, and Stephen is my dad's brother. And then he said, John, which is my dad's middle name, and Anthony, which is my uncle's middle name. So it turns out, I don't think Stephen has a middle name, so it was Stephen, John, and Anthony, so that was all that, that side of the family, so that was important for some reason, so I thought that that's how that probably linked. Um, James um, is my uncle's name. So you know James, and I was kind of like, um, and I thought of all my friends instantly, and he went, oh, your family call him Jimmy, so I was kind of like, oh. And then with Tony, I was kind of like, my ex's dad was called Tony, but I doubt it has anything to do with him. Do you know a Lily? And I was like, uh, um, and I couldn't think. He said, you know a Lily? I was like, no, I don't know a Lily. He's like, you know a Lily? I was kind of like, N I don't think so. And the creepy thing was, after the session, I realised he was actually talking about Lillian, which was my stepdad's mum who passed away a few years ago. And he kept looking around the room, so I do actually believe she might have been there, which is kind of scary. And I really hope I didn't insult her by not remembering Lily was her nickname, because I always thought of Lily as Lillian, so it's kind of like, uh. The weirdest thing afterwards, he said, um, whose dad's died? And I said, I can't really think. And my friend's dad died a few years ago, but that was quite some time ago. It's like, no, someone's dad's died or someone's dad's gonna die. And I was kind of like... And that fucking freaked me out quite a bit. He also said to me, am I living in a flat? And I was like, no, he said, you're not living with your parents. Either of them, the divorced. Yeah, I'm living with my grandparents. He went, good, stay there. You're going to be tempted to move out and get a place of your own. Don't do it. And I was kind of thinking, it was a bit strange and abrupt. And then he said, um, it's really good for them and it's really good for me. And I was thinking, oh. and then I talked to my aunt afterwards and she was like, oh, it's good for me. Blah, blah. Yeah. I'm going to talk like this for a while because my legs are sore. I would go to one again, but maybe a different one to kind of try and get a different experience from a different person. Do I believe everything he said to me was true? We'll see. Only time will tell. I do believe in spirits. He also asked me as well if I was listening to the spirits, but no spirits have come to me. Nothing like that has happened to me. So I was kind of like, mm. So the things I've taken away from that is... I'm not going to go anywhere near the person that's unhealthy for me. He confirmed everything that I was already thinking deep down and everything everyone else was telling me. So, yeah, um, I wasn't really going to go back there anyway, but he kind of made sure that I'm definitely not going to. And I'm going to not get the tattoo this year just to be safe. I mean, and Chanel was speaking about this and she thinks it might be an infected needle and that's why he doesn't want me to get it. So it's kind of like, lovely. So I'm going to stay away from the ink this year and I'm not going to get back with my ex, but everything else, I'm just going to take it as it comes. I really am, and I really hope something good happens this year. Not only for me, but for all of you, every single person that has supported me and been here for me, and all the people that have talked to me, and I'm really happy that I could have helped a lot of you as well, because I know quite a few of you are suffering from depression too. So I'm so happy that I could actually reach out to you guys and actually like, provide a shoulder via the internet. Hi guys.